in Unit A, we talked about the idea of the number line and extending our ideas to negative numbers. And we looked at adding integers or positive and negative numbers. Today, we're going to extend this idea a little bit also to include not only addition, but subtraction. Let's look at how we did things in the good old days. If Ann has $456 and repays a $234 loan, how much money does she have left? We can give a review of the information, first of all. Uh, we have a total of $456 and she repays $234. And our question is, how much money does she have left? We see that we can just put the larger number on top, as we did originally, subtract the smaller number for an answer of $222 left. Let's recast this problem and several others that we've looked at before into the idea of using integers on the number line. If Ann has 456 and repays a $234 loan, let's see how that would look if we did it on the number line. There is the 456 that Ann has, but the loan is effectively a negative number, so if we wanted to take that into account, she pays the loan, we would go 230, 234 units to the left, which leaves us with 222 we can see that this is equivalent to adding the quantity minus 234 to the original 456. It appears that ordinary subtraction is exactly the same as adding a negative integer. Let's look at a few more examples of this. Here's one other one we've done before. There are four gallons of gas in my tank. The tank holds 12 gallons. How much more gas must I buy to fill the tank? We can see that we have four gallons plus some quantity equals to 12 gallons. The way we've done this before is to say 12 minus 4 is equal to 8. Let's look at this again using the number line. We have four gallons of gas in the tank and the tank holds 12 gallons. How much should we buy to fill the tank? Originally, we cast this as 12 minus 4. Let's look at it on the number line. There's 12 gallons minus 4 gallons is 8. We can actually say we have 12 plus a minus 4 equal to 8. Again, casting one of our original subtraction problems on the number line so that it's possible to see that subtraction, regular ordinary subtraction, the things we did before, can be thought of as an addition of a negative number. Let's look at another example. You want to go out tonight, you figure it'll cost $25, you only have 13, how much more will you need to free your night on the town? We've done it before like this, 25 minus 13, and the difference, remember, when you deal with subtraction, you're talking about a difference. The difference is $12. Let's look at this vis-a-vis -vis the number line. I, have, I will spend $25, which means ultimately I will be in the hole 25 or spend minus $25. I have $13. So I have plus 13, and how much do I need? Well, I would have to add the 13 to the minus 25, and I see I would get minus 12, or I would be $12 in the hole. Again, you can think of it as adding a negative number on the number line, exactly as we've done in the previous unit, except now we're adding negatives as well as positives. Same thing. Ordinary subtraction is the same as adding a negative number on the number line. Let's extend the idea a little bit. What about having a subtraction of a negative? 
So in this case, we would have a 3 minus a minus 2. We have to find a way of thinking about this, and in order to think about it, I'm going to use my little creature sitting here on the number line. In the past, we can see that if we have a positive number, we go to the right. If we have negative numbers, we go to the left. So we can think about this as the creature walking to the right or forward on positive numbers and backing up, walking backwards on negative numbers. But in order to get a feeling for what to do with that minus sign, I'm going to throw in another couple of rules, if you will. For addition, if the number is, if the, if the operation is an addition, my little person faces forward. If the number is a subtraction, the person faces backward. But again, positive number walks forward, negative number walks backward. Let's see how we would handle the problem of 3 minus a minus 2 and look at what the total final result of that would be. We start here and we see we have a 3, which means walk forward 3. No problem. But now we have a minus. Notice what happened. When you have a minus, the creature turns around, faces the other direction. Then we say we have a minus, a minus 2, but minus 2 says back up 2. But since the creature is turned around, we really have gone to the right 2. So the total effect is that 3 minus a minus 2, according to the rules and the behavior of our little creature, is effectively the same as adding. So if you see a minus a minus, we can start thinking about the idea that that may have the same effect as a plus. Let's look at another example of this and see how it might work. We start at 0 again, facing to the right, minus 4. That tells us to back up 4. Then we have a minus sign that says turn around. Next, we have a minus 2 that says back up 2. We wind up at minus 2. So the total final effect of carrying out this operation by t walking around on the number line and turning where it's appropriate is minus 2. But if we think about it, we can see that minus 2 w can be gotten by 4 minus 4 plus a minus 2. So the, again, the effect of minus a minus is to act as a plus. Here's another interesting example where all the signs are negative. So we're going to start off exactly as we did before with my friend sitting at zero. Then I see we have a minus one, which tells him back up one. A minus here says turn around. Then minus four says from that position back up four. And I wind up at three. So you can see that a minus 1 minus a minus 4 is exactly the same as minus 1 plus 4, which would give me a 3. Here's another very simple one, 3 minus a 5. Let's see if the same idea works for a simpler situation where I don't have minus a minus. But we'll use the same rules just to find out. I'm going to recast the problem a little bit just to make clear what's happening. We have a 3 minus a plus 5 in this case. Let's follow the rules. First we see we have 3, which tells us to go ahead 3. Then we have the minus sign, which says turn around. Then a plus 5, which says go ahead 5 we wind up with minus 2, and following exactly the same rules we did for minus a minus, you see the model works here too because 3 
minus a plus 5 would give me minus 2 by the rules we've already developed. When you subtract, as we said before, you're really adding the opposite when you're dealing with integers. And when you're subtracting a negative number, we can specify what the rules are. If you have a situation where you see minus a minus, then that combination can be changed to a plus. It's effectively the same thing because, in a way, you're turning around and moving backwards on the number line, which moves you in the plus direction. That's a nice way to think about it. Then, once you've changed the two minuses that occur back to back to a plus, you can just proceed exactly as you would if you were dealing with regular addition. For example, here we have a minus 4 minus a minus 3 that's equivalent to a minus 4 plus 3, which is equal to minus 1. And if you want to, you can think about going to the left minus 4 on the number line, then to the right 3, which will leave you at minus 1. Or you can follow the rule that says if you have two integers with opposite signs, you proceed as you do in subtraction, then the sign of the result is the sign of the larger of the two integers. So either way you think about it, we now have three ways for dealing with this. You can think about turning around and so forth, and you have these rules that you can use to help you to do these things. Let's now use what we've seen in solving some problems. Here's the first one. And I've been there, I used to do automobile rallying a lot of years ago, and this uh, situation has actually happened to me once or twice. An automobile rally driver sees the 47 mile marker and realizes that she really needs to be 16 miles in the opposite direction from the start of the rally, the zero marker. How far, does, how far is she from where she needs to be? So let's look for information in here we are at the 47 mile marker and we really need to be 16 miles in the opposite direction from the start and the question is how far is she from where she needs to be? Let's summarize the information. We're at the 47 mile marker and we really should be 16 miles in the opposite direction. So we really should be here. And what we want to know is how far are we from the right place or what is the difference in the distance from where we are now to where we need to be. There's the distance there. We need to know what that is. We see that it's actually larger than the original 47 or the 16. And your intuition would tell you by looking at the diagram, we need to add those together. But let's analyze it a little more formally. We're here. We need to know what that distance is. The way we can do this, it's actually the difference. What's the difference from where we are now to where we need to be? Whenever you hear difference, you think about a subtraction. We're now at the 47 mile marker and we need to be at the minus 16. The difference then would be the 47 minus a minus 16, or we know we have a minus a minus 47 plus 16. We actually are 63 miles from where we need to be. Here's another example of how you might use the same procedure, the same idea. On a nice winter day in Tucson, the temperature is 72 degrees Fahrenheit. In Bismarck, North Dakota, the temperature is minus 13 degrees Fahrenheit. What's the difference in temperature between the two cities? When you see the word difference, you need to think about subtraction. Let's look for the information given and asked for here. We're given the temperature in Tucson is 72. In Bismarck, it's minus 13, and we're looking for the difference in temperature. As usual, we'll summarize the information. There is 
the temperature in Tucson, roughly 72 degrees. Here's the temperature in Bismarck, minus 13 degrees. And what is the temperature difference? We need to know what that difference is. And we see that it's larger than the 72 or the 13, which again tells us that we're probably going to wind up adding. But let's follow the logic. We're here. There's the temperature in Tucson. There's the temperature in Bismarck. We're looking for the difference. We need 72 degrees minus a minus 13 degrees. We see a minus and minus. So we need to go to 72 degrees plus 13. We add that together. And we see that the difference is 85 degrees. Again, it's larger because in the case we're looking for the difference between a positive number and a negative number, if you have a positive minus a minus, you need to change those two to an addition. And this is a very important observation because you'll be running into this condition a lot as you do more and more with algebra. Let's look at yet another example. An engine falls off an airplane traveling at 12,286 of feet above the earth. It falls to the ocean floor um, 5,678 feet below sea level. How far does the engine drop before it stops completely? In other words, we want to know what that total difference in distance is from where it started to fall to where it finally wound up. Let's again review the information we're given here. 12,286 feet above the earth. It fell into the ocean 5,678 feet below sea level. How far does it drop before it stops completely? Let's summarize the information and draw a diagram. So here is our situation. And we want to know what the total distance is that it's fallen. In order to do that, we're going to see that it's larger. So when we analyze it, we're going to see we have to subtract from the distance below sea level. And we have the same situation here, 12,286 feet minus a minus 5,678. Minus a minus tells us we need to add this so that the total distance that the engine falls is 17,964 feet. And this seems reasonable because if we think about the 12 something and then another 6, that gives us 18,000 roughly. So if we estimate and think about it, our answer seems quite reasonable. Let's look at another example of this. An internet business has lost $456,897 in the first quarter of the year. On the other hand, the stockholders have been promised a profit of $950,000 by the end of the year. So the company has a few quarters to make up the difference. How much must it make up? So here's the information it lost. $456,000 in change, and it promised a profit of $950,000. How much must the company make up? We'll summarize the information. It lost $456,000. It promised $950,000. What's the difference? How much is needed? We need to know the difference between those two. And again, we see from the diagram, it's going to be an amount larger than either of them. So we have to use the same idea and subtract. So 950,000 minus, minus a 456,897, the minus and a minus acts as if it were a plus. So we add those two together to see that to fulfill its promise to the shareholders, the company has to make $1,406,897. Look at another one. 
you see that there's a pattern for these. It's a difference where a negative number is involved. Absolute zero, the temperature which all molecular motion theoretically ceases, effectively the lowest temperature you can possibly reach is minus 460 degrees Fahrenheit. Liquid hydrogen, which is very cold, has a boiling point of minus 423 degrees Fahrenheit. How far above absolute zero does hydrogen boil? Pretty close to it, actually. Looking for the information, we're given that absolute zero is minus 460. Hydrogen boils at minus 423, and we want to know the difference from absolute zero. We'll summarize and make a diagram on the number line. We're given absolute zero is minus 460. So there's the diagram going to absolute zero. Hydrogen boils at minus 423. There's the boiling point of hydrogen. And we want to know what the difference is. We take minus 423 degrees Fahrenheit, the boiling point of helium, and subtract from that the temperature of absolute zero. So we have minus 423 minus a minus 460 degrees Fahrenheit. Minus a minus is the same as a plus. So we now have minus 423 Fahrenheit plus 460, which we see by looking at the number line is 37 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's the answer for this problem. Actually, there is a temperature scale called Rankine that's based on absolute zero. So zero degrees Rankine is absolute zero, and then we can say that the boiling point of liquid hydrogen is 37 degrees Rankine, or 37 degrees Fahrenheit above absolute zero. Let's continue looking at different problems to get the hang of this because there's sort of a quirk of thinking that you need to deal with in problems where you're subtracting a negative. Let's look at this problem. The greatest temperature change for a single location on a given day was recorded in Browning, Montana, where the temperature fell from a high of 44 degrees Fahrenheit to a low of minus 56. How much did the temperature drop? Let's locate the information we're given and what's asked for. We're given that the high was 44 and the low was minus 56. Whoa, the mind boggles. How much did the temperature drop? Let's summarize the information. We're given a high of 44 and a low of minus 56. And we'd like to see how much the temperature dropped or another way of saying that is what is the difference between the high temperature and the low temperature? That would be the difference represented by that blue arrow. And we see that it's going to be greater than 44 or 56. Let's do the calculation. There is the high temperature and the low temperature. So we have 44 degrees Fahrenheit minus, since we're taking a difference, a minus 56 degrees Fahrenheit. We then calculate this. We see that minus a minus acts like a plus. So we have 44 plus 56. And if we do that, the temperature difference on that one day was 100 degrees. Quite a temperature difference even more than in Tucson between daytime and nighttime in the winter. Let's look at another problem involving some geography. The lowest point in Africa is Lake Asal, I hope I pronounced that right, which is 515 feet below sea level. The lowest point in South America is the Valdez Peninsula, which is 132 feet below sea level. And our question is, how much lower is Lake Asal than the Valdez Peninsula? Let's look for the information. So the point in Africa is 515 feet below sea level. The point in South America is 132 feet below sea level. And we want to know what the difference is. How much lower is Lake Asal than the Valdez Peninsula? 
Once again, let's summarize the information that we found located in that word problem. We're given that in Africa we have the site 515 feet below sea level, and in South America we have the site that's 132 feet below sea level. We need to find out what the difference is. This case is a little bit different because we're subtracting finding a difference between two quantities that are negative. In all of the cases we looked at before, one of them was positive and the other that we were subtracting was negative. This case is a tiny bit different, but the procedure is exactly the same. We have minus 515 feet and we subtract from that minus 132 feet. As we found before, minus a minus is a plus, so we add 132 to minus 515, and our result is minus 383 feet. You might wonder why we have the negative sign. If you notice that our distances are referenced to sea level, to zero, and all of our distances were negative, were down. So the reason it's minus is because we're looking at it as if our difference is from zero down, not from zero up, which would give us a positive distance. Our difference starts at the 132 feet and looks down to the 515 feet. So from 132 down to 515 is negative, still going down, so that explains the minus sign in that difference. One more example. Laura has a bill for $489 on her charge card. She returns a dress that costs $115 and picks up a skirt on sale for $50. How much does she now owe on her credit card? There's the information. She has $489 bill charge card. She returns a dress, meaning she gets some credit. At the same time, she buys a skirt. How much does she now owe? Let's summarize the information. There's the original balance. Notice it's negative. She buys a skirt, also negative, and she returns $115 worth of merchandise. Let's see how we'd work this out. What is her new balance is what we would like to know. How much does she owe now? We have minus the 489 uh, plus a minus 50 minus. Now, since she owes that and returns it, she doesn't owe it anymore. So it's minus what she owes minus a minus, which again is a plus because certainly she's added that. So after we take minus 539 plus 115, we find that it comes out to be minus 424, or she owes $424.